Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be looking at this vintage Amstrad CTV 1400 TV colour portable. Um, now I'm not sure what year it is, I can't remember. Um, I remember repairing a lot of these in a day and uh, they only suffered from a couple of common faults. Apart from that there was a good set. Um, so what I've done, before we even take the back off, let's just have a quick look. Yeah, there we go, model CTV 1400 made in Singapore. Um, before we get too involved with the TV, um, I've dug out all these vintage service manuals um, from my, uh, a long, long time ago when I used to repair all sets like this. So let's have a quick look at some of the sets that made uh, Amstrad famous. So here we go guys and girls, this is going to be a trip down memory lane for a lot of people, um, me included. Uh, this is the CTV 1000 battery mains colour portable. Um, I think that was just a 10 inch, that's manual number one. Uh, the next one is the CTV 1409, that's um, a 14 inch remote control colour. Um, next one we've got the Amstrad CCT, sorry, CTV 2200. Um, that was an absolutely dreadful set. Um, they had a very short life, they suffered from a lot of dry joints, the, the power supply used to blow up, the chopper transistor would blow. Um, the only good thing about these was the mullard, um, I think it was A56 540X tube. Um, that was the only, the tube in this was the only good thing, you could take that tube out and put in a lot of uh, Fergus and stuff like the TX10 where the tubes didn't last very long, but they had a, a tremendous life in these, probably because the set didn't last very long. Um, so move on, uh, that's the Amstrad VCR 4600 Mark II video cassette recorder 4700, that's another one. Um, here we've got the Amstrad VCR 9000 video cassette recorder. Uh, the next one, that's the Amstrad CPC 464 uh, computer and CTM 640 colour monitor. That's another one. Uh, this is the manual we're going to be looking at for this set, the CTV 1400, um, which a, a bit later on, I think in the mid 90s, they produced another one. Um, and they called it exactly the same model as CTV 1400. So there was a lot of trouble in the 90s getting parts for the later ones. Um, here we go, the um, Amstrad CTV 1401. Uh, now I do have one of these sets with a different name on. Um, here's the next one, the Amstrad TVR1 television video cassette recorder. Um, hang on, we're skipping one there. That's the next one, the Amstrad CTV 2000. Um, this is um, a later one, this from the, I think probably the mid 90s or the late 90s, CTV 20N. Uh, then we've got the Amstrad TVR2 Televideo, Amstrad TVR3 Televideo, uh, that's the famous Amstrad DD8900 double deck recorder, um, VCR9000, VCR9004, VCR8800, VCR8700, VCR8600, um, VCR 7000, now that, that's a very, very big service manual. Um, I can't actually remember, but I think this is just badged up Amstrad. I think this was a clone of something else, but I can't just be certain off the top of my head. I'm sure it was badged up. Um, VCR 6000, 6100. And um, the last of the service manuals is the VCR 4600. Right, so over to here then, let's just take a quick look in here and then we'll get the back off the tally. Um, I'll run through what the common faults used to be and then uh, we'll plug it in, see what happens. The diagram should be somewhere in the back. 
yeah there we go circuit diagram um, that was a common fault there the str451 but we'll uh, we'll come to that in a minute now one of the very very most common faults on these is this chopper transform make like a zinging noise um, that's the best I can describe it and the set wouldn't come on um, and it was a very very simple fault it was just a dry joint there on the line driver transistor um, now I don't know whether the, the pins of these transformers were oxidized when they were made um, but that was the most common fault just a dry joint on there apart from the uh, failure of the STR chip Right, so that's the TV with the back off. Uh, we'll have a quick look round and then we'll plug it in. Um, as you can see, it's fitted with an Orion tube, um, a Panasonic tuner. Let's just scan over here. Um, it doesn't look in too bad condition. It needs a bit of a clean out. Um, incidentally, this came from a man, a friend of mine. He used to repair TVs a long, long time ago. And on the top, um, there's a lot of uh, little notes been attached to it to parts is changed on it so I don't know what we're going to find I don't know if this works or not but it's certainly been standing a long time because one of the stickers on the top dated 1994 um, that's the line driver transformer in question where you used to get a dry joint um, which I'm sure anybody who used to repair these will remember that um, so let's just stop the camera. I can see it's had some work done there. There's been some soldering on here on the tube base. Um, that's the STR IC, the power supply switching, which we'll come to that in a few minutes. But just let's have a, a quick look underneath first and see what if there's anything missing or what's been done to it. Right, so that's the underneath view. Um, the first thing I can see is there's a lot of soldering been done. Um, the line transformer has been resoldered. The STR has been resoldered. Uh, in fact, um, a ticket on the top says the STR has been changed. Um, let's have a look. Mm. That's the transformer that used to get dry joints. You can see that's been soldered. Not very good or with a very poor quality grade of solder so I might just run over that before we plug it in um, but yeah there's certainly been probably a lot of dry joints been resoldered in there um, there's a chip down there looks like it's been changed I'm not sure what, the, what that is part of the decoder or it might be sound um, but I think the first thing we're going to do is just um, take the excess solder off this transformer and uh, I'll resolder it and then we'll plug it in and see what happens Right, so that's the soldering touched up. Now it does say on the sticker here, working 12th of the 1st, 1994. So I think the best thing to do is just switch it on now and see what happens. Right, well I'll tell you what happened when I turned it on. Absolutely nothing, the set's dead. Um, despite the fact that it says on the top it's working. Um, now I've checked across this capacitor here, C504, that's the reservoir capacitor for the main HT rail. And there is actually a dead short across that. Um, so the chances are is the Avalanche diode, the um, SR2M. Now, if the Avalanche diode shorted out, uh, that means this STR451 has been subject to an over-voltage condition. And that's what's short of the diode. Um, now, I, I might probably have these in stock. I don't think I've got them in stock anymore because in the day they were very expensive. But I think the best thing to do is to disconnect that. If that's short circuit, we'll, um, we'll disconnect a pin on the line driver transformer so it takes off the line output stage. And then uh, we'll just connect a 60 watt bulb across there without the diode in and see what voltage we've got. But I'll just check first I haven't got these two parts in. So SR2M, right over to the storeroom. Right, well not this room, we need to go into this room with the older stock in. Um, right, as you can see we've got thousands of semiconductors, we're going to have to stop the camera a minute and put it down while we'll do a quick search. 
Right, well that's the SR2M Avalanche diode. I haven't got the STR in, uh, but for those who have not seen one of these before, that's a Sanken, that's a different one, it's an STR441. Looks like a transistor in T03, um, but if you turn it over, it's actually got an extra leg in the middle. So let's just um, undo the line driver transformer to unload the um, line output stage and we'll just try it with a 60 watt bulb without the diode in. Right, so I've disconnected that diode, uh, I've disconnected the line stage and put a 60 watt bulb across here um, and there's still no output from the STR. Um, now I've tried the two kickstart resistors here, we've got 350 volts on there and um, there's a very low voltage here. Um, now these two resistors are alright, so that only leaves the STR, in fact the STR is the reason that diode um, is faulted because it's put more than 130 volts out instead of 103 um, now as, as I mentioned before these were very very expensive in the day so let me show you something else so by the mid 1990s uh, with these devices well obsolete anybody who's still got stock um, put the prices up and they commanded a premium price which half the time made the set wasn't worth repairable now if we look here this is a, a copy of television magazine January 1997 um, an advert for economic devices and we can see there listed the STR451 which is £23.41 um, and then a pound postage and then VAT on top, 17.5%. So for a device like that, what probably at one time was just 2 or £3, you were paying ne nearly £30. Um, so I looked into an alternative solution to one of these, and uh, I re-engineered this, and I came up with something else. So this was my solution to the problem, and you can look this up yourself. If you go to World Radio History and look up... Um, television magazine january 1997 um you'll see it there on the front page the stk 4 xx replacement and uh, here we go and i've still got i've still got the uh prototype here actually uh the the one that was uh, the exact one that was photographed for the magazine so um I'll just scan over here quickly and uh, amazingly that's the diagram for it there amazingly I've managed to find um, the original article I wrote for the magazine um, that's his diagram there and that's the, um, the schematic part of the TV so um, I think what we're going to have to do then, um, seeing as I haven't got one of these, um, we're going to have to fit this into the set then and see where we go from there. As you can see underneath, it's, it's got the three, um, three terminal pin out. So this is a direct replacement. Um, the pins, are um, even the board's been chamfered there, so it exactly fits into this uh, Amstrad CTV 1400 right so let's stop the camera let's get that fitted in and uh, let's see what other problems we've got with the telly then right guys and girls so here's the progress so far it's out with the old avalanche diode um, out with the old STR 451 which you can see there three terminals and one on there makes four um, let's move down here. You can see my uh, replacement module fitted in there. That's where this used to sit. So all we've got to do now is uh, switch on. Right, so we're not quite out of the woods yet. Um, I've got it fastened into this key nectar. Uh, let's just turn on and as you can see we've got sound
so the sounds come up it's looking promising but we don't have a picture uh, now I've actually checked the EHT the EHT is up um, so the line output stage is running but I can't see any illumination in the tube the, tu the uh, tube heaters aren't lit up now I've, as I've already noticed and I pointed out before uh, there is quite a bit of soldering been done on here uh, quite rough soldering actually um, so it looks like somebody's had a problem here before but if we look at this sticker on the top it says was dropped CRT necked um, now something else set dead so it looks like somebody's fitted a different tube in this now it is an Orion so you would assume it's the right one but when you look here um, it's actually been reconverged so um, I would imagine that this is the right tube and it did work at some time otherwise there'd be no reason to reconverge it so let's just take a quick look at the heater supply uh, obviously comes from a line output transformer um, I would imagine there's just a break somewhere so I'm gonna have to stop the camera and just investigate this right I've just checked with the service manual it is the right tube that's been fitted it's a 370 um, is it 370 L HB 22 so the service manual says 370 HB 22 um, so that's not going to be the problem somebody's fitted the right tube um, so we've just got to trace now pins 4 and 5 of the tube base um, back to the line output transformer right so this appears to be the problem we have actually got the heater supply coming from the line transformer um, but this pin here, pin 5, doesn't seem to be grounded um, the earthy end of the heaters right so the earthy end of the heater here is actually connected by this black wire straight onto the uh, aquadag ground but there's no resistance between the aquadag ground and the main chassis ground because this is a live chassis um, now what I found is mm made me jump my phone what I found is there's a connector here that connects to the aquadag and the ground of the tube base um, but it's not plugged in so all we've got to do is find where that plugs in and then uh, we should be up and running right I can actually see it now um, just between the inductor and the capacitor uh, that's where it goes so I wonder if I've knocked it off when I fitted this uh, modified str so right let's stick that back on and um, let's try it again then right so here we go i'm going to hit the power here with the connector um rather than um, the on and off switch here we go and there we go it's on Right, all we've got to do now is connect um, a signal source to it and let's see what the picture's like. It means it right, so I've just tweaked the grayscale a little bit. Uh, that's looking absolutely fine. Let's turn the colour up. Yeah, that's looking good. Let's switch it back to uh, Sky now. It's revolutionary Vax one power battery gives you up to 30 minutes high performance clean. There you go. Not too bad a picture. When you're done, your floor's dry and smelling fresh in minutes. With a squeeze of the trigger, the Vax glide gets on with cleaning itself, and the dirty water gets poured away so you can get on with this. Clean hard floors fast and easy with the amazing Vax One Power Glide. For a limited time, order direct from Vax for just £199.99 and save £50. And get an extra brush roll plus one litre solution worth over £30 yeah, it's, free. It's got colour on, but I don't know if it shows up on the camera very well. Oh, that's better. That's for a better picture. Of caffeine. Try this. Planter 39 tonic. It's for the days you wash your hair and the days you don't. It's really easy to use. Apply it directly to your scalp. Massage in. Right, so there's just one other thing to... Uh, I made a mistake on earlier on the video. I've just realised. Um, these avalanche diodes, 
I thought they break down at 130 volt, uh, but I've just tested one here, and that's the faulty one I've taken out. That's the brand new one. Um, I've just tested one, and they do break down at more than 130. So let's just push this button. So that's the breakdown voltage, uh, 144.6. So it's probably 145 volt, um, whereas I said in the video was um, 130. So uh, yeah, okay, let's move back over here. That's the tally up and running on Sky. Uh, that's an original Amstrad CTV 1400. Um, if you want to look up about the um, STR, it's um, January 1997. Let's have one more quick look round the back while this is running. And that... That's my uh, STR replacement module, all fitted in the set, all up and running. Right, well there you go guys and girls, if you like what you see, subscribe to my channel. Um, but uh, just before we close the video, I'll just give you a quick preview. This set, I actually got... Um, as you can see the buttons are a bit noisy uh, this set I actually got off a friend of mine and he's, uh, he's been collecting TVs for years his house is ram full of stuff and uh, not just this TV but I got uh, about, about half a dozen more off him as well so uh, just before we close the video uh, I'm not going to say too much at the moment I'll give you a quick preview of some of the other stuff I've got and um, if you subscribe, you're going to see the other stuff in another video. Um, so let's just turn that off. So we've got two sets here. Um, I'm not going to tell you what they are. You'll have to watch the future videos. That's just a back view. I'm not giving too much away. Uh, another set there. That's another set there. A couple more sets there. And another tally down here on the floor. So guys and girls, if you like what you see, subscribe to my channel. A couple of these other sets I've got I think are very, very rare. Um, I can't even remember the last time I've seen some of these sets. They're that old. Um, so if you want to see more vintage TVs, please subscribe to my channel and carry on watching. Alright guys and girls, many thanks and I'll catch you in the next video. Is someone going to take a chance in one of the early races? If that happens and that horse runs well, maybe that will cause them to spread out. But the way the races have been run this week, they've stuck to the middle, to the far side, and that's where, according to the first four days, you would expect the races to unfold today. And that side is low numbers, that side's high numbers when you're looking at the draw. Which horses are you looking forward to, to getting a look at later on, Adele? Loads. Honestly, there's absolutely loads I'm looking forward to. I mean, Australia, um, Nature Strip was so impressive. That whole time.